Hey, what's up? I don't know who it is. <laughs> but uh, I just, you know, I've been watching some videos about workplace bullying, and I just wanted to give my two cents. Uh, I've definitely been, you know, I've worked at a lot of companies, at a lot of managers of all different kinds. <laughs> okay, so I can definitely uh, speak about workplace bullying. Workplace bullies are actually psychopaths. Okay, they're, uh, they are they're psychopaths. They are, and, and I'm not saying like an axe murder psychopath, but they're actually... Um, they're psychopaths. That's what they really are. Um, they're social parasites, and they thrive in social settings. And they don't produce or make anything a lot of the time, or they don't contribute. They just throw roadblocks, and they will come into a department and single-handedly destroy the whole thing and then get a raise at the end of it. These people are usually found in management positions, um, although they can be co-workers. Like if you're on a team, you'll see one person trying to control everybody on the team. That's uh, symptomatic of that. You see, you have to understand when it comes to people, most people want to be left alone. As humans, we want to have freedom. We want to be able to do what we want and work how we want and want to be able to do what we want to do. But then there's this group of people that literally live and thrive to control other people. So it's no coincidence that these people are more in the management positions than normal people are. If you have any kind of work experience, you should know it's not actually the merit of work or it's not a job well done that gets you promoted. I mean, anybody should know that. So um, it's really about other things. People that have this need to control other people and to have power over them, those are essentially psychopaths. There's different flavors of psychopaths, okay? There's, uh, you know, it manifests itself different in women than in men, right? But uh, that's the one thing they have in common is they lack empathy. They're not like you and me. They're not real people. They thrive off making other people miserable and making themselves feel good. How do you tell? How do you know that you're being bullied at the workplace? And I don't like the term bullied so much. I, I Because I, I think that there should be a, a campaign against workplace psychopaths. Because that's what they are. They're psychopaths. Um, but... How do you know you're being bullied in the workplace? Very simple, micromanagement. Very, very simple. Uh, you have somebody, sometimes even a coworker, that is basically exercising control over you. Uh, what these people do is they befriend you at first, they slowly work their way in, they confide in you, they act like they're your friend, and then all of a sudden, they begin to, uh, you know, they begin to start telling you what to do and telling you how your work is and and uh, you know that's like from a coworker standpoint you'll send out an email and they'll respond back and underline the fact that you have a mistake and that's a form of it's funny how nobody else does it except for the one person and that's actually a form of uh, control it's a form of them exercising control over you and them making you feel bad and them trying to humiliate you now usually though again i will say that it's coworkers. you know they're not much of a problem but when you get to managers and they call them micromanagers there's no such thing as a micromanager that is not a management style if there is a micromanager a micromanager is a psychopath the psychopath is a workplace bully which is the common term okay um, that's what a micromanager is there's no such thing as a micromanagement style these are psychopaths they are they are uh, they thrive off control of other people and they will lie and con their way into those positions and fluff their way into uh, It's just that's what they do They will, like you will literally go to do your job role and these people will be there Completely making up their own job roles and making it their their literal job role is to be in positions of management If they're not already there and usually you're gonna find that they're already there and once they're there The company will do anything to defend them and guess what you cannot do anything about workplace bullying You can't don't listen. I don't care what any video says what go to HR and see what happens go ahead learn the hard lessons Okay now the physical symptoms that come from bullying are not actually from bullying they're physical symptoms of uh, of anxiety stress You'll be at your computer one day, then all of a sudden you'll start getting dizzy. Huh? Yeah, you'll get the dizzy, dizzy spell right at your computer. Huh? Yeah. Don't think I don't know. Okay? And uh, you'll, you'll research it and sudden dizziness, and you'll think you'll have an inner ear infection or something like that. And, uh, and it actually turns out to be that, yeah, you're, you're just, you just had a panic attack. That's what that really was. You'll have lots of issues. You could have headaches. Some people, it you know, gets their stomach, but that's that's from the anxiety of it, right? You'll you'll you know before you know it, you can be on medication, SSRIs, uh, thinking you have a problem, thinking that why is this? I think that 
I think that part of the problem is, is that I don't think people really pay any mind to just how common um, workplace bullying really is as far as management goes. I don't really think that people really understand that. And I know it can be terrible in a union environment, uh, especially in the public sector, where people's jobs are guaranteed. And, and it's just uh, because, you know, they're not going to actually, you know, it's not about sexual harassment, uh, which is ridiculous. I mean, you know, they, they, they set up all these laws because you don't like, you know, the fact that somebody told a joke about him a dirty joke or something. That's ridiculous, you know. But, I mean, uh, workplace bullying is, is far 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 beyond anything like sexual harassment it actually is a real problem it can make you uh it can drive you to oh shit it could drive you to suicide you know it could it could drive you to take a gun and 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 bust into the workplace and and shoot everybody up like that's the sort of thing that that you know these workplace psychopaths bring out in people you know, there's, it's not just there's, there's a reason why people run in with guns and start shooting up the place. And the reason why, because they're driven to extremes. And that's why. So um, it is a form of abuse. It is a form of stalking you, literally stalking you, looking over your shoulder, belittling you, implying that you don't know what you're doing 24-7. Uh, can't get a weekend by yourself. You spend all every waking minute, every day, every night just thinking about... When am I going to see that next email? You know, and the email pops up or the chat window pops up. It's like, oh, you know what I mean? And the thing is, is that when these people actually harass you, when they're harassing you, and, and I don't like to use the word harass because that's something else. That's another type of thing. But when these people are stalking you, but I'll say har harassing, when they're harassing you and stalking you and harassing you, when they're when they're doing these things, they don't, it's, it's uh, what they're actually doing that harassment of you and then figuring out how they can get you next is part of their uh, it's an obsessive compulsive uh, disorder so they are psychopaths and their bullying of you is obsessive compulsive so it's like an itch they have to do it like let's say you have a scratch that you owe that's hey that's like a uh, you know a compulsion right so you know, if you have a nervous tick or, or something that you always do all day or, or you kind of just like bite your nails or something, it's the same thing with them, except what they're doing is they're um, figuring out a way to email you or it's like an itch. They had, they just have to get you. They just, they're psychotic. I don't know. I can't explain. Like, I'm not one of these people that, that need to control everybody. And you're going to find these people in abundance in social situations. You're going to find these people in abundance on all the internet forums. You know, the moderators on the internet forums with the 5,000 posts that run around policing what everybody says and editing posts. And, and who do you think that is? Uh, you're going to all over YouTube, the people that just run around YouTube and give negative comments and thumbs down, thumb down videos. And, and, uh, you know, <laughs> don't, they don't want to participate at all. They just want to be negative and come in and, and, you know, they never put up there any of their own videos, but they're running around hating on your videos and, and, uh, trying to get groups of their own to wage war against people who make videos. And that's what they are. They're psychopaths. They're social parasites that produce nothing. Yeah. They don't make videos and they, they don't contribute anything. But they sit around like they're the king police of all the YouTube and there are the armchair quarterbacks telling everybody what to do. But you don't produce anything. You don't make anything. You don't uh, contribute to the community at all. All you do is spread negativity and get in the way of progress being made. That's the same sort of thing. And that's what they do in the workplace. These people don't do anything in the workplace. They're roadblocks. They're, I really do believe somebody said that these, uh, that these workplace bullies, a.k.a. micromanagers, a.k.a. psychopaths, these people actually cost companies $500,000 a year. And I believe it. They purposely withhold information. They purposely take subconsciously or otherwise take tools away from you to be able to do your job properly. These people are nuts. They're crazy. You know, I've had normal people that were bosses and I've had people that were, that were literally, they were psychotic. Like, I don't know how else to say it. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> and they'll, they'll never admit because psychopaths will never, ever they, they're one of the least likely people to ever admit that they or acknowledge or even think about the fact that they have a problem because they think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. So it's an unfortunate thing. It's something that's uh, built into us. And there's a lot of current research. And they're actually beginning to think that psychopaths are their own species of humans because it has to do with being survival of the fittest, right? Uh, a lot of the politicians are psychopaths. They just have this 
overwhelming need to control other people to compartmentalize and you know just to reign power over them right so you have a lot of the world dictators these people are all psychopaths we don't the citizens us we don't want to fight with each other right but there's these people up at the top that want to wage war and fight and gain power over each other psychopaths you see what i'm saying and if they're not a psychopath then they have um people that are psychopaths all around them you know so i mean i think it's a very new thing it's something within the last like 10 years that people are starting to discover and it ties in with the whole liberty movement and, and all that stuff and that's what that's what these uh workplace bullying managers are they're just psychopaths and the companies will defend them they will settle a lawsuit with you they will and the whole thing will likely end in a promotion for the bully and uh you can go to HR, go ahead, you know, learn the hard way. <laughs> Nothing will happen there at all. And, um, and I, you know, there are a lot of sick people in this world. And there's a lot of um, people that are, that I just, I, you know, I don't feel sorry for them. Because, you know, when your job's online or you're quitting a job or leaving it or you're the one who's suffering or you're the one having, uh, you know, panic attacks and going to the hospital and getting on SSRIs thinking that you're the problem and why isn't it happening to anyone else? You know, what can I say? I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing, there really isn't. You can only look for another job. And I, I know how it's like, you know, eventually it gets to the point where it's not about the money or the career as long as you're working with a good group of people. That's all you ask for eventually. Like, I'll, I'll take anything and, and just have that. And just when you get to that new job, it's like, you know, you, you know it's, uh, sure enough, you'll, you'll, you'll get that one character. Oops, the screen went out, but... You'll get that one character. Anyways, I've been rambling along enough. So in recap, workplace bullying is actually micromanagement, more or less. And uh, they don't give you room to breathe. That's essentially workplace bullying. Um, there's a lot of different ways. There's harassment that's, that's different, okay? But just micromanagement is workplace bullying. And if you are being micromanaged, the person doing it is a psychopath like a psychopath okay uh so as a personality and they say they estimate between one in 22 people are psychopaths and it doesn't this is not about uh, uh axe murderers and all the hollywood stuff when i say psychopath i mean you know they uh that's the mental disorder that they fall under 